Second, I will talk about the relationship between store and reducer. Reducer is a function which receives two parameters. First parameter is current state. This current state is also this state object, which I've just mentioned here. I will talk about the second parameter, which is action, later. As I've just mentioned, reducer is a function which is passed into redux.createStore as a parameter. I'm going to use this reducer in order to answer the first question here. We configure the default value for state object into var default state like this. Let me explain in more detail. At first, when we create store with redux.createStore method, counter function is invoked for the first time. Initially, state is undefined. For that reason, this expression is true, and this block of codes is executed in order to assign this object into the next state. As you can see, in this function, we always use next state as the returning result. After this reducer returns a result, that result is used to update the state. Therefore, after this function, state will become an object with count property equal to zero. Then, render method executes this code in order to assign zero into this position. So far, I've finished talking about the relationship between store and reducer. I've also answered the question, how to set default value for state. In summary, redux.createStore method receives reducer as parameter. Reducer is a function which receives the current state as the first parameter. We configure the default value for state in the reducer. I stop talking about this flowchart and start to write code for this question. I will talk about object.assign at other steps. It is not important now. Let's check the browser. I want to change this value into question mark to demonstrate that this value will be replaced by a value from the state object. Let's check the browser. The result is similar to what I've just analyzed. Let me console log some information to show the logic of setting default value for state object. I want to use console log in order to show the relationship between store and reducer. Counter is a kind of reducer, so I change counter to be reducer instead. If you are not familiar with console.group, you can search it from Google. It is mostly similar to console.log. Since it is just a normal JavaScript, I will skip explaining about it. I made this example to help you realize the usefulness of console.group method and console.info method. If you are not familiar with it yet, you can stop this video temporarily and have a look at them. I console log information of state before being updated here. and console log information of state after updating here.
I want to show what happens in Reducer, so I console group it here. I console log state here in order to prove to you that next state here will be the updated state and used for render function here. Let's refresh the browser to see the result. You can look at this console to review the relationship between create store method, reducer, and state. In summary, when I create store with reducer as a parameter, the reducer is invoked to set the default value for state. Then, render method is invoked to attach a property from updated state into a HTML element in order to show updated information on the browser. I comment here to remind you that counter is a kind of reducer. At first, current state is undefined. I comment here to remind you that right after store is created, and before the reducer is called for the first time, state is undefined. The next state in this reducer will become the updated state. This state is used to decide the information on browser through the render method. Let me test with count equal to 100. Let's refresh the browser to see the result. The result is as expected. If we don't set default value for count property here, we will see undefined on the browser correspondingly. 